Are you debugging your code and have a collection of data? Not sure how to look at it? Let's mash on that. Hi, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the ASP.NET Monsters. On today's episode, we're going to take a look at another debug visualizer inside of Visual Studio, the tool that we all love. And today, we're going to look at one that lets us see a bunch of things. I feel like that's pretty descriptive, Dave. Uh, is that, uh, yeah, that's pretty that? much the episode. Okay. So oh, thanks, thanks for joining, joining us. us. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't touch your nose yet. I don't think we're done. <laughs> All right, All right, so take so it away. What do you got? This is actually, uh, somebody called this out in, a, in the comments to the last episode, and I'd like to thank whoever it was, but YouTube comments is horribly broken, and I can't see that particular comment anymore for some reason. Um, who knows? But uh, there was something added very recently to uh, Visual Studio 2022. Is that the version we're using these days? Um, yeah, whatever the latest is. V VS Current. VS Current. Uh, that allows you to visualize an innumerable, any kind of innumerable of any kind of object. And this is a little bit of a throwback for me because back in the early days of .NET development, when we used to program in data sets, data tables, remember those days? Nope, those <laughs> days never existed. We tend not to remember them on purpose, but one of the things that was actually really cool with that uh, was that you could inspect your variables that happen to be data tables or data sets and click this little magnifying glass. It would pop up in a dialog box and you could see a table of the data and you could actually like see what your data looked like at debug time. So they've done something similar now, but more generically for anything that happens to be like a list or an I enumerable of data. So looking at the same sample application that we were looking at the other day, uh, this admin app for the Two Weeks Ready project where we have a list of hazards. If I hit a, add a breakpoint here and I run this just to see, I want to inspect what this I enumerable of hazard info looks like, I can run the app. I should be able to hit that breakpoint. I think I'll still be logged in here from when I was testing this earlier. unhandled exception has occurred. Oh, well, we're nice. debugging something I wasn't expecting to be debugging. <laughs> there While it is. we're on the topic of the debugger. It worked this time. It just needed a refresh. Um, so last time we were looking at how we could uh, pin these different properties so I could see the name and everything when I just expand the hazard info here so I can see like some of the properties kind of surfaced up into the the tooltip, but there's also this little magnifying glass here where I can click view and it pops open this dialog box with a data table in it and I can see all of my data in tabular form. I can even export it to Excel if I wanted to do like more filtering and kind of exploring what the state of that data was at that particular point in time in the execution of my project or my code. Um, I can do things like sorting in here uh, but it's just another really convenient way to, to look at the data that um, makes it easier to deal with larger lists or collections of data. Or anything with those extra properties or like where you're not drilling through. How does it handle nested properties? I think you can actually expand if it's a property that was another object. I don't have that example here exactly, but you can actually expand columns it looks mm -hmm. like. Um, you can okay. also hide columns. So I think it, it does like a nested table kind of deal. Nifty. That's exciting. Yeah. Hmm. What would happen if you addition. give it a four dimensional array? Mm. I don't know how you'd visualize that. Anyway, <laughs> that's probably not a problem you're going to run into too frequently. You might want to. So these are kind of interesting, these visualizers. Um, when I hover over here, uh, I just click the view button, but it is a drop down button. It happens to only have one item there, but you can actually implement these using, uh, by creating a, a user control basically uh, that implements a particular interface and you can register it uh, with your code so that Visual Studio knows about it as a way to visualize certain things. So Simon, you could create your own four-dimensional array visualizer. 
so that's like something I can just have in my project. It's not like a thing that I need to yeah. build some sort of OCX nonsense that goes into Visual Studio. I believe so, yeah. Interesting. Hmm. I bet there's all sorts of places where that would be useful. Like I could see things like um, having like very specific collections, like uh, a collection of points. You could click on it and it could give you like, hey, here's a grid with your points on it. Yep. Or equally with map data, I could visualize those points on a map. That would be very handy in some circumstances. I sense a follow-up video. Hmm. Yes, I look forward to you presenting that. <laughs> we'll add it to the list. <laughs> awesome. Okay, well, it was a quick one, but I think this is super useful. And now we've got another episode uh, in the queue as well. So thank you for that, uh, uh, Dave. And um, you can join Simon and Dave and I on the next episode of the ASP.NET Monsters coming at you weekly. Uh, we would like you to uh, take the opportunity uh, to uh, comment and uh, below and uh, do the subscribe thing thing mash on that little bell button so that uh, you get notifications of future episodes as well and we'll see you guys next time on the ASP.NET Monsters. Hi. Thanks. Bye.